Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse stable, reliable income from music, and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hey, welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am so thrilled to be here with Kevin Williams from Session Wire. This is going to be a really cool um, talk today because he's got a product that's really going to solve some problems for a lot of you that you may have been trying to figure out how can you solve, especially during the pandemic. Um, this has become, you know, even more important and uh, something that people are wanting to do. And so I'm going to let him explain what that is, what his product does. But first, Kevin, if you want to give us a background of you and how you got involved in music and what you've done up to working with Session Wire. Sure. Well, great to be here, Bree, and thanks for the invite. It's uh, wonderful to speak on the subject. I'm just not sure with that question. It's such a loaded question. Where do I begin, kind of? Uh, how far back do I go and how, do, how deep do I dive, kind of thing? Uh, but I guess, you know, quickly, like uh, a lot of, I think, my associates and friends and, and people I work with, you know, started playing in bands when I was younger and and that kind of led me to uh, being around studios more and more. And the more I was around studios, the more I liked that part actually more than touring and playing in bands. And uh, after I did that for a while, I, I did a lot of different things, wore a lot of different hats in my career, that's for sure. Uh, it kind of evolved into the more I was in the studio, the more I liked the studio part and engineering and producing music. That led to writing jingles and, and other things that were sort of commercial activities with my skill set at the time that evolved into doing that and uh, starting to work on my own music and started a publishing company, which was sort of the home of my, you know, my core company, my, my main company. And that was in the eighties and that kind of evolved into, wow, maybe I should teach this. And actually it was my sister-in-law that said, why don't you teach this instead of, you know, teaching in other colleges. And so I started that in the early nineties. That started to become a big issue with my career was that I really liked the educational piece. And uh, so from that, uh, I started developing my own curriculum and uh, started building uh, courses and such. And by the end of the 90s, going through all of that, that evolved into me starting my own college and loved that and did that for many years. That evolved into out of my studio, evolved into me partnering with Garth Richardson and Bob Ezrin and starting Nimbus School of Recording and Media in Vancouver, which is a an elite recording school. And that went through, you know, mostly through the uh, 2000s kind of aspect of it. And by 2009, I guess that started and somewhere in 2014, I moved on from that. And that, that's kind of what got me all the way through that as quickly as I could to get to Nimbus or excuse me, to SessionWire. And uh, so my partner, Robin Lebo uh, and I, we've known each other for 30 plus years, God, it's coming up to probably 40 years, which is really sad. Um, <laughs> but it was his vision to start the platform uh, called Session Wire. And in the music industry, people have tried this a few times, but limitations of internet back in the day when it first started, wasn't fast enough, uh, no social media to promote it on, that kind of thing. There was just always something that sort of held conceptually what Session Wire does back. We started that in 2016, essentially, and had our first MVP in late 2016. And from that, it evolved into where we are now, which is the full, you know, full-blown session wire app and platform, which continues to expand and do more things. So essentially, kind of the elevator pitch, if you will, of what session wire does is, is that it's the easiest way to explain it quickly is it's kind of like Zoom for the music industry. So you can imagine that we're on a, on a call here right now where I can see you and we're talking. And, and, uh, but imagine if you could do that, but connect your recording devices. Like in the music industry, people have what are called DAWs, digital audio workstations. 
essentially their digital electronic recording software. And there's a lot of different platforms. Uh, people who use them would recognize Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, those types of names. And what our app does is connect all those workstations in any combination and allow your, and we, in addition to the, the um, talkback channel and the video channel we have like with Zoom here, there's a bi-directional stereo channel that's of studio quality. And that connects between those workstations and allows you to record and work on virtually anything you would normally do in a recording studio, but do it with people remotely anywhere in the world, as long as they have a good stable internet connection. So it, it's, a, it's a game changer in the sense that for the music industry, they've always been kind of stuck with how do I work remotely? And we didn't do this because of the, the pandemic. We did this. How could you know the pandemic was coming? We you did couldn't. This <laughs> no. So we, we did this because we knew and what we were planning for was the inevitability that the music industry had come to a place over the last 15 to 20 years where it's completely changing its structure. Like the old music industry that evolved through the 30s, 40s and up until you know, the late 2000s, when it started to kind of come apart, there has been really nothing to replace that. It's been kind of crashing and burning, honestly, and evolving uh, into something different. And what we could see was that the record labels didn't have budgets to fly people around, put them up in studios anymore. And like, how are people going to work together? Uh, you can't afford to just, you know, on your own, no budget, fly people around to come to your studio or, or for you to go to other studios. So the idea was, was how could we create something that was studio quality that could let people basically with a subtle adjustment of their workflow work as if they were in their studios, except work with anybody anywhere, you know, in the world, basically, without having to fly around and move people around. That conceptually is where this all came from. The pandemic simply exaggerated the whole idea that people needed this. In fact, when the pandemic started, we were getting all this organic growth on our website and users that were trying to find us, but they did, weren't exactly sure what they were looking for, which was kind of interesting. And as soon as they kind of went, wow, this is, this is exactly what we need, then our user base just started dramatically growing from that. So that's kind of the, the quick version that gets us up to where we are with Session Wire now. So essentially, you know, the, the quick the, you know, elevator pitch from all that is whatever you normally would do in your recording studio with a slight adjustment of your workflow, you can do on session wire. It's the next best thing to being there. And the quality of the audio is extremely high studio quality. The video quality is very high. You know, I won't get into details of how high it's not worth it, but essentially it just feels like you're working with people in your own studio, except you're, they can be anywhere located anywhere in the world. It's pretty darn cool. And yeah. I, I think, you know, with my students during the pandemic, the first thing they were looking for was they just wanted to jam with other musicians or at least practice with their band when they couldn't, you know, be together physically because yeah. during the yeah. lockdown. And is this something they could use for that, even if they weren't recording? Because, you know, they tried a bunch of different things and there was always these latency issues. Yeah. The latency, here's the reality check. The latency issue is a fact of physics. Um, if somebody says we've got a, 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 an app that will that solve latency, then they're not being truthful. Um, our app manages the latency in a very clever way. Um, but the idea of jamming on the internet, there is sites that will do that. But the, the proximity is by the time you, musical people get pretty picky about subtle timing delays you know we, we can call it latency but if you just call it musical uh latency for instance like if you're standing if you're a bass player who stands on stage a long ways away from his bass amp you get used to playing with that delay of that sound of your amp coming to your ears so imagine what happens if you put headphones on there is no delay but you're always used to delay because of your bass amp being farther away just using that as a metaphor then you're going to be picky about that. And musicians get picky about timing and rhythm. So if on top of being picky about timing and rhythm, where there is no latency, imagine if there is latency and how are you going to deal with that? So with the idea of jamming, uh, yeah, there's sites that work, but they work poorly. I'll just, and, and you have to be with very close and farther away. It just doesn't work at all. So that's not how our system manages the latency. Um, you can have people and people use Sessionware all the time to co-write together and you know, have a pair of headphones on and an omnidirectional mic picking up an acoustic guitar and their voice and going through the stereo channel and working on ideas back and forth. And the amount that's there isn't 
such that it would annoy you that you can't write and work together that way. But I wouldn't record it that way. I would do that for getting ideas down. And then I might say, all right, I'm going to play this chord progression. We're both liking. I'll record that. And then maybe the other person adds something to that. And that starts to become the basis of where the song grows from, which essentially is what you would be doing if you were just sitting in a room with somebody working with them in that way. We also have a feature that we've added as of July with our version two, which is which I'll talk about here quickly in a sec, which allows you to add other people to the call. So it's not just two people on the call, for instance. Uh, on the subject of launching version two, we had a version one, which we archived back at the beginning of July. And it was the original version we had it was only available on Mac. It wasn't available on Windows. The new version is Mac and Windows and been built from the ground up. And it uses what are called plugins. Uh, the original version setting it up with your audio interface wasn't really hard, but it required building what's called an aggregate device. And for some people, that was a little too hard for them. The version we have now has plugins, which basically, if you and I were connecting on SessionWire right now and you had your recording software open, all you would have to do is take the SessionWire Stereo Send plugin and put it on the main output of your recording software. And that's it. You wouldn't have to do anything else. Hit play and everything that's in your recording software comes to me. And I just put the plug in to receive it on my side. In fact, it's even easier that automatically our system detects if you have an audio interface and it just comes to your audio interface. And there's nothing on the receiving side you have to do. So we've made the reason I told that to you there just then is we've made it so simple that to set up at this point that anybody who uses their digital audio workstations, their recording software would find what I just said, wow, it's that easy. And it is now it's become, you know, second nature to people to not only set it up, but use it and work on their projects together. No, that's incredible that you can, yeah. I mean, that's really, I think the barrier to entry for a lot of people is like, how to set this up. And when you started talking about like, well, you have to create an aggregate device and my students would be just like, Ooh, like, Oh no, this is not, I'm not doing this. Cause that's I know, too it's, complicated. It, it, it's funny because I've taught music production and audio engineering for 35 years or more. And I've taught this to people and seriously, it, it, over the last 20 years, everyone's attention span seems to be dropping because it used to be what I, that was like kindergarten, things like that just to, used to be accepted when you were trained to work in recording studios. It's like, oh yeah, I know all that stuff, right? So, but it's different now. Well, people, and there's people like me who aren't trained in that area that are still right. recording from home, right? And I that's want to right. do it, but I don't want to have to go and learn all of that complex stuff. Of course. So on, on that subject, which I can say two things, we have essentially an app application that allows the say I'm a producer and you're my you're my top line or the artist I want to work with a singer I can just basically control your computer like team viewer where you I send you an, an invite and you go yeah sure you can take over my computer which people do all the time and then I can run your computer for you and then all you basically have to do at your end is make sure that your mic was plugged in and you know I would do all the rest on the computer that's one solution, which is very important to, to top producers, that they have the ability to control the other person's computer. That's so oh, yeah. incredible. I mean, because then it'll be like, OK, you know, let's 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 punch in here. Let's punch in here. And if you were on the other end as the singer trying to like, go, OK, where's that? You know, where's my marker? Blah, exactly. blah, blah. Ugh. <laughs> it takes exactly. all the fun out of being the singer at that point. It, totally. So we also have another feature coming. It'll be out in the next couple of months, which will allow that scenario to be even simpler, where if you have someone who doesn't have digital audio so recording software, no DAW at their end, and they have, you know, basically a, maybe a USB mic they plug into their computer and that's it. No audio interface, nothing. They have no knowledge to run anything from their side. We have a feature coming that will allow all of it to be controlled from the remotes, from this, from my side. If you were my top line or I was connecting with. So that will be very interesting to see all that and how that plays out with people. The, the whole goal is to make everything as simple as possible. And it is a new world with bed, you know, we'll call them bedroom producers, just people who are essentially have their own recording software and their own gear, whatever it is, in, in, a, in a small location, an office, doesn't have to be a bedroom. But just so there's millions of people doing this these days, it's a very different world. Instead of having these large studios and much less people overall doing this, it's the other completely the other way around. Large studios still have a lot to benefit by technology like SessionWire. It allows people, you can't record drums in your bedroom. 
So for instance, you could say, I'm going to go to the studio because they have this great remote setup and they got a drummer and all the drums and the microphones and everything is all set up and they don't have to move anything or do anything. So it's affordable for me to actually have a drummer play remotely so I can do that. So studios have a place that's not changed for them, but all these millions of people who have, you know, a small amount of gear, but they, but they are a part, whether they're amateur or even professional, they want to be part of that community. By the way, the word community with session wire is extremely important. It might want to be one of the most important words because that's kind of what's happening in the world is communities of people that want to work with other people and they want to call and connect and collaborate and write songs together and hire someone to sing on your track or play drums on your track. So we have an app that or portion portion of our app, we have a utility in our app that's that component, that social component that allows you to reach out and find people and connect with them. I mean, it's like it'd be like a Zoom call if there was nobody to talk to, like mm-hmm. wouldn't be a lot of fun. Right. I mean, you, you want to connect with people and you want to hear them play and maybe audition for you and all of that. So Session Wire accomplishes all that as well, that huge community piece. Well, and there's so much of that community when you're in the studio. I mean, like, you know, hanging out, listening to, you know, the engineer mix and like making comments or just like as one person is recording their part, the other people are in the control room, like listening and and talking. And, you know, that's a big, that was like one of the funnest parts I thought of recording. Well, interesting on that point, because what you're really hitting on there, in addition to the community piece, is the experience that you get that rush of adrenaline that you get when somebody's doing something in real time that's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So just park that thought for a sec. What's been happening prior to session one and, and, and remote collaborative technologies like this for the last 10, 15 years is because people can't afford to be flown around and do stuff like they used to. Not everybody, but most people can't. So what people have been doing is cobbling together solutions especially since the pandemic, which are like a whole bunch of different apps of which Session Wire is a one-stop location that does everything. Like they're going to use audio movers with TeamViewer, with Zoom, with whatever to be able to do what Session Wire does all in one place. And even prior to that, you could take it a step further where if it was you and I working on a song, we would never have that one-to-one connection in real time to work on something that creates that adrenaline buzz i'd be sending you hey here's my idea for the song i've done this much on it you add your parts we get somebody else to play bass whatever it is and it's all offline it's all notes and emails and whatever i'm on my you know i'm facetime you a bit and it's just a combination amalgam of things all of that negates the most important thing that used to happen when people were in studios which was that electricity that vibe when something really special is happening which you can't do unless you get that vibe because we're all together. And so if you go back to the idea of that, you know, that rush you get, that a rush of adrenaline, that's been missing in people's music and, and, and a lot, sometimes too much technology polishing it too much. So the human elements kind of gotten lost in all that. Like you could have a, a brilliant performance by a singer, for instance, that is just giving me the buzz up my spine and go, oh, that's amazing. We're all looking for that. Might not be on the best mic, might have had mistakes. It might not have been perfectly in pitch. It could be all these things, but there was something inherently embedded in the performance that's extraordinary. All of that has been missing. And Session Wire, that's one of the biggest things with people working is they love the fact you can have that vibe, like you're in a session with people again, and we're all excited about something and something magical comes out of it. That's a huge thing that's been missing for a long time. And we firmly believe that's coming back with people connecting through technology like SessionWire. I'm excited about that because I do think, you know, as a singer songwriter and somebody that, that loves that really emotional performance. And like, as you said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I do think in the last decade, it has, they, it has been lost a lot of which is because, you know, they're it's, it's very producer based and then like they get a singer and then they get them to record it and then they manipulate it. And it's not that organic experience of the recording where they're in the same room. It's or it's it, it, the organic is a great word because if you listen to great records, whatever they are, any style, any genre, um, you will feel that magic in the recording. Somehow you play it and you go, wow, it's there. It's kind of like a, a great photographer can take a picture of somebody. And you can look at that picture and just, wow, it just, I get it. 
and another picture taken of the same person by not a great photographer. And you go, it's just a picture. It doesn't do anything for me. It's kind of the same thing. There's something inherently recorded into great recordings that has nothing to do with the technology. Not always, just technological things that are pretty cool. Vintage keyboards, for instance, will sound cool to me. If I listen to old Elton John recordings, because I'm a keyboard player and I hear all those ARP synthesizers in there, I go, whoa, yeah, those sound good. Um, but mostly, if you're talking about performances from people, it's just something that was amazing that happened. And it happened, here's a, here's a, here's a good one. Uh, in my years of teaching and students wanting to understand the craft, you know, they will listen to a great recording and, the, and they want to know, why does that vocal sound so good? This, is, this happens a lot with, with producers who ask this question. And, the, and what they're looking for is, oh, it's a certain mic, it's a certain plug-in, it's a certain piece of processing, it's a certain th thing, techn technological thing. And almost always, not always, but very often, more often than probably not, the answer is, oh, I think it was a first take. And then the person will go, no, no, what, it, you know, what really is it? No, I, th I think it was a first take. So why is a first take so important? Well, because the singer isn't, thinking it over overthinking it it's like if you say you know, brie i'm going to take your picture and you suddenly go into this weird you know facial expression mm -hmm. like, that doesn't look right and when I, this happens with my daughters for instance you catch them when they were younger especially you catch them when they're not trying to smile so when you do a first take you don't think anyone's recording you possibly in fact uh, audio engineers and producers used to have all sorts of tricks they would play on the artist to me, so they didn't think they were actually recording them. So right, you're would, just yeah. recording a scratch, so the yeah, band just, has something exactly. to Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're just going to do a run through. Right. And of course, if you were a seasoned singer, you'd go, yeah, right, you know, uh -huh. I, I know what you're doing. But, but, but that's, it's an important concept, because if you think about, you're not trying too hard, you're not overthinking it, you're just being yourself. And if you sing from your heart, and every word that you sing, touches you and you mean it that's that's when i'm producing vocals it's got to be like you got to mean this you can't just read the words and sing and that's and that's somehow i'm just using that as a quick example somehow that gets embedded in the recording and it stays there permanently in the recording because it's there it's not something you can a, a computer can add at a later date Yep. You can't like we used to joke around like there's all these amazing plugins equalization compressors Pitch correction, of course, and, and and what you get, what you don't have is this heart and soul plug-in. <laughs> you just put it on the track, and yeah, maybe it's perfectly in tune. It's all in timed right. It's it's too perfect. Okay, just put the heart and soul plug-in on there. It just makes it sound like what I'm describing. It's not going to happen because it's just not there. I I'll, you know, I hope you and you, I know you are, but your listeners get how significantly <laughs> important that is. Absolutely. No, it's kind of like when you do it, when you're doing MIDI instruments and you're like quantizing them and you over quantize them. <laughs> no, now we got to put a little humanity back into it. That's right. And that, and that actually is a feature on a MIDI editor. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like the I mean, groove, MIDI of course yeah. has its place where if you, if you have say a bunch of pianos and you're not sure which one you want to use, and if you record it as a MIDI track then and a great performance, no quantizing, just played naturally, then at least you can switch the piano to different pianos while not trying to play it and go, that one fits the mix that I'm working on. That's that's a great thing about MIDI, of course. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, so let me ask you a little bit more about the technology of Session Wire. First of all, like I know musicians get super frustrated with the sound on Zoom. And I don't know if it's it's, it's gated, it's, you know, squish it's all that how do you guys navigate that and you know what makes the the sound on your system different the stereo stream is coded at the highest possible bit rate and um, i won't get into the details but our, our other founder uh, rick beaton uh he he isn't actively working with the company although he has as an he works as an well not works but he contributes his time as an advisor he wrote the original code and, and rick is one of the top audio uh, coders on the planet, literally. He, he, he's just an amazing man, was very involved with the original MP3, the committee that uh, put the specifications together for it in the mid eighties. So um, what I can tell you, it's the highest possible bit uh, rate. Um, it's studio quality to the point where people that I play it for that have very critical ears, like People who spent their, their lives in recording studios get super picky about the subtlest of things. 
And that ear training, by the way, is it takes years to get to that point, you know, because you just, it's like anything else, you have to practice. So they're very, um, they will notice things that aren't good enough for them to say, it's, it's not good enough for me in a professional environment. And the people I've played the stream for, I'll go, wow, that's amazing. I, like for me, I do a, the majority of setting up the A-listers and the, the, the you know, influencers and the people that uh, work with us. And they, I can, I've literally had the occasion to see so many people with, with this look. I remember the one that always sticks for me is Andre Betts. And when I set Dre up the first time, he had a pair of headphones on in his control room. And first time I sent him the audio stream, it literally with headphones, his face just kind of like this. And then he goes, <laughs> he goes, Oh, this changes everything. And I went like, th these are people with really critical, uh, you know, opinions of sound quality. And the first time you do hear that level of studio quality coming over the internet to you, it's, it's, it really is, it's, it is weird and life changing. Like he says, I've had the word game changer. Well, people hear it the first time. So many times I've lost track. So very high quality studio quality. It requires a very good internet signal. So for instance, if you've got Wi-Fi, you need, it's not just having a strong Wi-Fi signal. It's having a signal that's not competing with a lot of other networks. This is the thing I don't think a lot of people understand about Wi-Fi is that if you are in a house with a Wi-Fi connection and there's not a lot of houses closer and your drop down menu that shows the networks that are available has just you, your Wi-Fi will be fine as long as you're not like so far away from the router. But if you're in an office building or apartment building, there's like a huge list of networks. Even if you've got a strong signal, you've got so many networks competing for that space. So if you can can't connect your, you know, your, your computer to your router directly on an Ethernet cable, turn your Wi-Fi off, then it's rock solid or a really good strong Wi-Fi signal is required because we don't buffer the signal. You're talking about like compression and, and buffering and so on. It's very easy for us, for instance, if we buffer it to get around bad Wi-Fi. Other applications do that. But that adds to the latency as well, because the buffer is doing that. So it has some time to figure out what's missing and then interpolate it and put it back together. We don't do that. So you need a really great Internet signal right from your server, uh, your actual provider, I should say, plus from your router and, and so on. Wi-Fi, if you're using it short of that, I mean, you know, that's the significant difference. If you can't say that you know, other competitors like you're talking about Zoom don't have that. That's that's a very significant difference that Session Wire has for sure. It, is it better to plug directly into the Ethernet versus using Wi-Fi? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you if you've got a cable and you plug your cable into your Ethernet, turn your Wi-Fi off. This it's a funny thing. Even very experienced people will plug in their computer to their to their router, but they leave the Wi-Fi on. So it's like, well, I'm plugged in. I'm going, yeah, but it's still defaulting to wi-fi you got to turn the wi-fi off as well oh but yeah, yeah i've done that on my phone so many times i'm like yeah. oh i'll switch to you know the off the wi-fi and then i forget to turn it off exactly and it's just you know it's human nature there's a little it's i think in our lifetime in my lifetime certainly the um, expectation of what the average person has to do every day from a technological point is is like gone through the roof I mean, it's, it's, if you really think about all of the expectations of what we do in our lives, I think especially now since the pandemic and people are literally having to connect through Zoom and other, you know, ways of, because they can't, you know, connect in person, it's, it's pushed everybody's kind of, uh, you know, what they have, to cons they have to work with every day, the technological portion of it. So they've had to rely on it more and more. I think our lives are much more consumed by most of the time too much technology and media and, and, and stimulus at the same time, all these things, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And there's always yeah. so many, we have to think about all these different technology the things time. at the yes. same time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Multitasking has gone through the roof. There you go. Yep. Well, so let me ask, like in a experience where you are recording um, using session wire with somebody else far away, let, let's say, cause I know you said you can now add more people. Let's say you've got a band and you're wanting to record uh, all together. Is it possible to actually record the parts all together or is it more like they're playing and you're playing and you're only recording one thing at a time because they're not quite going to sync? Okay, so the quick answer to that is that if 
you had people all standing in a studio, you'd be playing all together live off the floor in real time. We have a solution for that down the road, but no, not currently. That would be the equivalent of trying to jam, right. as we discussed earlier. It's just, it's just not realistic. The, the, the latency is a fact of life. 5G will help for sure. But no, it'll be more like what you would do when you go into the studio and you would start with drums, maybe the drummer playing to a click track, doesn't have to, but that's a, that's, there's a whole other story about use click track or don't, which we won't get into. <laughs> um, but if you had a drummer playing with a click track, then you do the drums, the drums would be recorded on the drummer's remote side on his computer and then transferred maybe to the producer so that he has everything as one at one location, say, call it the hub of everything. And then you'd add the bass, the guitars and so on. I mean, that's more or less what you're doing in a studio anyway. You're doing overdubs remotely, but you're adding your parts one at a time. Yes. Got it. Because I, I feel like I have been in some studio situations where they, quote, record the rhythm section, which is basically bass and drums together. Exactly. But that wouldn't work in this case. Um, it could. If it depends if the bass player. It, you could. But it, it, again, it, it's not probably the right way to do it. Mm. But, it but metaphorically, it would be more or less one part at a time if you kind of keep it to that sort of, you know, conceptually that way. Um the other part, you were asking about more people on the call. I should explain that a bit more. The call, the call, the, the call and session wire that has two people like you and I is a peer-to-peer -peer call. It's not a web-based call. So because of that, there's a lot of advantages. The latency is as short as it can get. It's basically once the, uh, your account has connected my account, which is web-based, that portion, then our computers are directly connected together you know, bypassing potentially other pings off of other servers and so on. That's good because it reduces the latency, but also it's more secure. So the security between our calls on session wire, the peer to peer call is like bank grade security for people, producers who are working with high profile artists and, and, and record labels who have the potential for security on their music being cracked by somebody. If it's in a cloud somewhere, is of huge concern because you could have like a major artist who somebody gets a hand, you know, a hold of that track before mm -hmm. it's been released and whatever, right? With session wire on the peer-to-peer -peer call, that's not going to happen. So that's a huge thing. But when we add people, just to add the more people to the call aspect, we call that feature session view. So the people, like if you and I were on session wire right now, this would be a peer-to-peer -peer call. And then we would add other people to the call and they would go across the top, kind of like a Zoom call. Those people are hearing the studio quality audio. They have a talk back channel. They have a video channel and they can mute those and turn the high quality audio up and down. So they have the same experience as if they're on the call and part of the recording, but they aren't part of the recording. The people on the peer to peer are part of the recording. Mm -hmm. So for instance, as an example, session art is, you know, dozens of different work, um, flow examples kind of things, ways to use it. Like an overdub is different than say a mix, mix review, a mix engineer with a client. Use the sec use session wire, but it's a different workflow and it's a different sort of use case. But if we were doing an overdub and you said, let's hypothetically, you're the singer, I'm the engineer recording you, we would probably want the producer on the call. So the producer could be on the call and producing the track, encouraging you, talking to you, that kind of thing. All of that would stay the same. But the producer isn't recording. I'd be recording you and the producer would be producing the track and that'd be three people on the call. If you're doing audio posts like dialogue replacement or, or Foley or something, you could have, you know, numerable people on the call that are stakeholders that need to be part of the decision making mm -hmm. process. But only one person really has to be recording it and the other person remotely is creating the, the uh, dialogue replacement or the sound effects or whatever it is. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you can have the other other people on the call. They're just not part of the recording portion of the call, but their experience is exactly the same. That's pretty interesting that you mentioned fully. Like I never thought of this as something that they might use in the film and TV industry. Oh, it's already big time uh. being used. Oh yeah, of course. The, 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 and, 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 and same with universities, like universities, especially since the pandemic, I had universities set up prior to the pandemic so that I could, they could have say a classroom or a, a control room that has nice monitors and a big video monitor. And essentially I would call them and I could be a guest lecturer. And mm. 
I would be able to, they would hear the same quality of audio from my studio at their end. And I would talk as if I'm just standing in the control room with them. I, I did this lots of times with classrooms where I could say, student over in the uh, right side there, you have a question. The person would stand up and I could listen and go, oh, yeah, let me play this example for you. And it would be just like I'm at the front of the classroom, except I'm somewhere else in the world. When the pandemic hit, that you know, exacerbated that to the point where now you can't all be in a classroom. You've got to have students separated somewhere. So we have a solution for that for the universities as well, which is going really well. So it's, it, it can be used for education big time. Music, you know, music teachers, for instance, with their students. You can have mix engineers working with mix clients. Mm. You can do overdubs. You can collaborate on a song together. I wouldn't record it that way, but just be like sitting in a room. You and I are working on a song idea. All these same types of things you can do. You just have to think that the workflow and how you do it is just subtly different. You have to have the session wire version of how it works versus how it would actually work if we were just in the room together. But they're not that much different, the examples. Wow. And how many people can you have on the studio view at a time? Right now, we're, we're working on a change to reduce the amount of consumption of processing power the individual computer requires. And so at this point, you know, it's under 10 but we know we'll get that number up significantly higher once we make that change. I mean, the problem is, is that if you have so many people on a call that the resolution of their video coming onto mm -hmm. the call is dragging the processing power of that individual's computer down, that's just not gonna work. But it's a, it's a simple fix for us, which basically I think probably next push will already have that fixed. So, yeah. and then we also, we also will have just on that subject, we have a broadcast version coming of that which will basically allow you to do the same type of, instead of connecting on Facebook and doing a live thing on Facebook or that type of scenario, which you know so many people are doing, you can just do it directly from SessionWire and then reach you know, hundreds of thousands of people if you wanted to, but they can't communicate back in that particular example. That's super cool. And, but like, I was thinking of the application of, you know, maybe you, you're going into the studio and you, you do a crowdfunding for your record and you offer like your highest tier, you get to like come hang out in the studio while we record. And, you know, you get, you get to have this spot and, and, and be watching and everything. I think that would be just one of the coolest experiences that you could offer and for a price. It's, it's all part of what I just alluded to. Mm -hmm. we, we, we refer to it as sort of our version of pay-per-view, mm. fly in the wall kind of concept. Wouldn't it be great if I could watch you know, a major band doing their production of their tracks and be like the fly on the wall kind of thing. It's that application. It would also be the application of you've got just a, a band starting out. And I would just love to have people participate and, and hang out with them. It's all those things for sure. Yeah. Yep. And you could have levels. You could have the level where you just get to do the pay-per-view and then you could have the super high level where someone could actually be in the room and like make comments. Totally. And, you know, totally. and then there's uh, Having your having your fans and your crowd participate is a huge issue, and we're we're, we're all over that for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I love to hear that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I had a few more questions. I'm trying to think. Um. So if if someone, I mean, obviously, I'm sitting here with a. I have a road condenser mic, and I have a Scarlet, and I have a. You know, I use Ableton and all that stuff. But like as you mentioned earlier, if someone just has a mic and they want to participate in something like this, it, it, it's really possible for them to do that. And if so, like what, what kind of a USB mic, like, do you have any recommendations? Cause I think that in my mind, I was like, Oh, USB mics wouldn't be good enough. I get it. <laughs> um, I, I won't go into any recommendations at this point, but I will go back to what we talked about earlier that we do, we do have that feature coming. Yes. And it will be so easy for a top liner to connect with a producer that way. And at that point, we probably will have like a forum or something where people can just say, you know, the same question you just asked. Mm -hmm. you know, what would be what have you what have you seen as far as performance, you know, sonic quality out of any mic that's a USB mic? Because, yeah, that's that's kind of the assumption I think people make is, well, wait a minute. It's not a real mic if it's a USB mic, which I think is, a you know, is, is a mistake to think that way. But I have to admit, I do. I, I have to be proved. I'll have to have a side by side comparison of, say, you know, one of the manufacturer's mics, which goes into a mic pre 
and one that's a USB that goes right into the computer. Because they're going to make the same, a lot of them, I'm sure, will start making the same mic in a USB version. It's not mm-hmm. just going to be companies selling you know, more affordable USB mics. It'll be the large manufacturers. It'd be interesting to have a side-by-side comparison for sure. Yeah, and I'll have to check because I'm thinking even Rode already has one um, yeah. that I haven't tried. Yeah. But, um, you know, I always thought, oh, for podcasting, it's fine. But like, it, I felt like it wouldn't capture the vocal nuances, but maybe it will. Well, there's there's that there's so much to that story, too, because it's not just the mic. Believe it or not, it, and I know you'll you will you'll get this for sure. It, 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 it comes down to the quality of the cable. So if you think of the whole chain, the mic, then the cable. Then the mic preamplifier, those three things right off. Then what is it going into as far as a converter at some point, convert analog to digital? There's like, is it going into a mixer? Is it going directly into your recording software? And if so, then it has to go through the interface. And what's the quality of the interface and the mic pre that's built into the interface and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all those things. It's funny over the years, I've seen this pattern where you have somebody who hasn't thought through the whole chain and they'll go out and get a really amazing microphone and plug it in with a piece of crap cable. <laughs> like it's like, you know, because people don't think of something like a cable can actually contribute to, to the sonic quality of something, but of course it yeah. does. And of course, manufacturers know that people know that and they can exploit that to some degree going, yeah, it's, you know, they'll put all these names all over it and probably what the extra things they're doing may, may, may not make any difference, but they can sell the cable for more because it sounds so good. Anyway, that's a whole other kind of. Yeah. And it's also you know, the room, the room that you're in is going to make a big difference too. So yeah, there's so many factors. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to re-explore this, this USB mic well, thing. Like um, for, in, for instance, with, with a singer, typically you want a very dry, dead uh, uh, environment, not ambient. Mm-hmm. But if you're talking about in, in a very, you know, if you've got the time to work on it and the years to appreciate it, the opposite is true for say drums. Mm -hmm. Back in the day with Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin, he was a pioneer in ambience. You know, if the drum kit was at the bottom of the staircase in this huge, you know, uh, hall and it sounded amazing, was amazing because the hall sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. So putting microphones close to the drums and not getting that room ambience would kind of be negating that whole concept. So, you know, there's two things there, a dry uh, environment to record in, which is important for certain things or close mics so you can control them individually so the leakage and the bleed isn't an issue, or the opposite. I want as much of that huge sounding environment and room as I can get because it sounds amazing and everything in between. Yeah, that's true. I'm always thinking like a vocalist, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I was going to ask, as far as the recording, does it matter? Like, does it make more sense for each person to record on their own computer or is it like you not lose anything for say the producer to record the vocals for the vocalist instead of just me recording it here on my DAW. Well, again, well, let's use the overdub workflow as an example, because there's so many use cases, dozens literally of what, in fact, just me quickly say that I remember one of the first mixing engineers I set up and he was reluctant to get set up in session or, and, and, and I said, you know, let's get you going. He said, oh, Kevin, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm sure I won't use it. And I went, why? He says, you know, because I don't do overdubs. So in his mind, he had come to the conclusion that Session Wire did overdubs. That's it. No, Session Wire does dozens of things. And once he figured that out, and he, in fact, the, a mix engineer playing a mix for a client, no one's recording anything. It's just a monitoring condition. The client doesn't even have to have recording software. The audio can go directly to the uh, client's computer and wearing headphones or speakers plugged in or whatever. Likely the client doesn't have a recording software anyway. So if the mix engineer is sending his mix either off a console or in the box to your client and you and I were on the call, I'd be playing you stuff in real time and you'd be going, yeah, maybe we could just turn that vocal up a bit in that part. And we would talk about things. And he went, wow, I mean, I wouldn't have to be sending them three versions of everything just to have them send it back saying, can you turn this up a little bit for me just to go back, restore the session, turn it up a little bit then send it back to them. Just have the client say, oh, you know what? I've heard it again. It's fine. (laughs) And then you have to undo everything you just did. And it took you all that extra time to do it. Like that's insane, but that's what mixing engineers were doing. As soon as he figured out, I can just, the session's done. The client can sign off, is happy with everything, heard it in their own environment. But that's a use case. That's not an overdub. 
So that's what I'm saying. People get confused. It's one of the hardest things for us to explain, to be honest, because it does so, sexual art does so many different things. Uh, how do you focus on people to realize it does lots of things, but you have to think, what are the use cases? How do I set up the workflow to do that? Because it'll do all these things. So, so an overdub, we'll limit our conversation to the overdub that was from your question, is the overdub is recorded on the remote side. Now you can stream the audio uh, and record it on the producer side. Let's say I'm the producer, you're the singer. Um, right now, the old version had a sync feature. So the streaming side could come by itself, not with the reference track and record on the producer side. That feature will, co will come back at some point. But right now, and even if it does, what I'm about to tell you for some producers is more important anyway. You record your vocal on your side on your computer. I produce your vocal on from my side as if I would as if you're in my studio, same thing. But it records on your side and it records as a WAV file. At the end of that take, and I really like that take, I should also tell you SessionWire has a built-in file transfer system, kind of like Dropbox built mm. into our app. So I'll say, you know, Bree, just send me that take. It was great. And so you just take that, drag it on top of my head and let go. And it comes out on my side and shows it downloading. I then take that, drag it into my workstation and it's a WAV file. So it has the exact, you know, quality that was recorded on that side. And I put that into my side where the reference mix, which essentially is the headphone cue I would have sent to you. In fact, back up really quickly. I create a mix on my workstation and my software of what, if you were in my studio, is what you'd hear on headphones, mm. like a headphone mix. I mix that for you. I send that to you by dropping it on your head. It comes to your side. You drag it into Ableton, create some more tracks to sing on. Now that's streaming to me, and I'm hearing you sing along with the reference track, and I produce it, and then you send what you've created back to me. Now I have a WAV file that you created on your side. That's the overdub workflow. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm assuming you have um, some serious tutorials. Uh, when, if I were just to get started right now on Session Wire, I would feel like I don't even know where to start. Yeah, it's true. And and uh, Brendan, who is a, who takes care of our our customer uh, satisfaction and support, amazing young man. He's created and along with Ross, we have all these amazing videos that are on our YouTube channel just for that purpose. And on the support pages, there is. Uh, templates for all the workstations for Ableton, Cubase, Logic, Studio One, everything wow. to get you started. So you just go there, you know, you download our, by the way, if you download our app and, and, and on everybody's computer, Mac and Windows, it will, it will have all of the, the plugin architecture installed. It's just whether or not you have a paid account or not that actually uh, initializes them in your DAW, but they're on your computer. So for instance, I should, that's a good thing to point out is when you create a free account, we call it a creator account. Um, that account has the file transfer. It's free. You could use it just like Zoom, except it's free and it's got more features and it's pretty cool. It has the community aspect built in, for instance. But if you, if you step up to a paid account, then the, the plugins become active. So here's another cool thing is if I'm, let's say you're a client of mine and you don't want to be a subscriber, you just, you work with me. I have a paid account and I have some clients that don't want to have a subscription. I get it. So for you, I would call you and my features, the paid features are grandfathered for the call with you. So you get my features while I'm connected to you. So you don't, on a free account, you don't, if you call someone else who's free, you don't get the features. But if you call someone who has paid features, you get their features. So that's a big thing for people with clients, music teachers that have students, for instance. So, so there's that aspect of it too. I should, I should have probably pointed that out as well. No, that's incredible. Um, yeah, so, but everybody who uses it has to have at least a free account so it will connect, right? That's right. You need at least a free account unless you're on a session view call. Remember I was telling you about mm -hmm. the call I can add people to? That works in a different way. The way that works is that inside of our app, there is a, uh, an icon that allows you to create a link, to generate a link. And if I generate a link, let's say that you and I are on a peer-to-peer -peer session on our call and we want someone else to join the call. Someone from the band wants to be on the call or a few people want to be on the call. Then I'll generate that link or you generate the link and you send it to them via Facebook Messenger, email, Slack, whatever you can get on your phone, whatever. And all they have to do is click the link and a browser will open and it just says join session. 
So there's no download and install for the session view portion of the call. Mm -hmm. It's just the link you click on. And as soon as they click on it, they will join the session. And then all of a sudden there's another person on the call. Got it. So it's just like a Zoom link in that way where you can- Essentially that way. In fact, even easier to connect than Zoom in that way. Yeah. Right. Because you don't have to have any software at all. Yeah, that's nothing. No, nothing. Cool. No download, no install, nothing except click the link and away you go. Yeah. Well, I definitely want to encourage everybody that's listening to this or watching this to go download at least the free version and, and check it out and try it out. Uh, quickly, like what, what are some use cases that they could use the free version for just to like test things out? Uh, well, first of all, if you've got someone that, that you're connected with, because that's the most fun is connecting with other people who has a paid account just to connect with them mm. so that you can just see what it feels like to do things where the high quality audio is going back and forth with the plugins. That'd be a first thing. But the fact that you can connect and, and file transfer things back and forth with each other, which you couldn't do with Zoom, for instance, I, and you can't find people like in the discovery tab that we have, which is like finding people for your community, build your community, look for, put in filters. I'm looking for a certain singer that sings in this style. And then you can reach out and go, hey, I'd love to connect with you. It's kind of like in the idea that if you see somebody on Facebook and you like their profile and you go, wow, I'd, I'd like to be their friend. Except mm -hmm. this would be, I like to be that singer's friend because that singer is, sings in a style that I like and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is in the free version. So if you said, instead of using Zoom for your call, uh, and it's not a, a, a studio recording call, but it's like a conferencing call. It's, it could be just music industry people who need to do what they normally would do on Zoom, but have that extra utility to be able to have those things happen. That's why the creator account we feel is very valuable. Right, like a co-write. And then, you know, maybe then one of you creates something, you know, a, a version, and then you can send the file totally. And also like, if you're a singer and you wanna find a producer that might wanna work with you and you don't even have to have the paid version if you find a producer that has one by using the forum, like you mentioned. There you go, exactly. Love and, we, it. and in the next uh, iteration of the software, you'll be able to call someone on the session view call without being on the peer-to-peer -peer call. So that's also a feature that's been requested that we have coming very soon. Wow. So what is the, the price for the subscription? Currently, the price is 15 US per month for the artist version. That's it. Wow. I know it's not expensive. No. But, but also keep in mind that we have other plans coming. There's a producer plan coming, which will be you know, more expensive than that per month, probably $29.95, $30 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. But it will have other features the artist, the current artist plan doesn't have and so on and so on. We'll have versions that are more geared towards audio post. We talked about a bit earlier, for instance. There's certain feature sets that make sense for people doing dialogue replacement and, and sound effects that are unique to the post industry that music producers and content creators that are working on music wouldn't really care about. So, right. you know, we will have other plans coming in the next few months that are more geared towards, you know, other, other use cases, other, other situations kind of thing. Yeah, right makes, now, right now, the sense. artist plan is 15 US per month. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible, dude. I mean, why would you get the free plan when you can get it $15 and try all this cool stuff out? I'm, I'm all about that. Well, um, so, just, just a hint to your listeners, that price won't necessarily be around for much longer for new subscribers. Aha. Uh -huh. So you better yes. go grab it now. Yeah, yes. no, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> so let them know how can they find you guys on the internet and then also how can they find your YouTube channel with all of the tutorial stuff? Okay. So the, the way you get to creating an account, the landing page is www.sessionwire.com. Sessionwire is all one word, .com. That will take you to an account where you can register your free account. You just need to put in your email and a display name and whatever. It'll walk you through some basic information, which we feel is important for us to collect from you, like where you live, what workstation you have, for instance, what interface just makes tech support and us understanding the user, you know, better for everybody. And once you do that, then the app will launch where you go and you see your, you'll see yourself like we are on a Zoom call and you go, this is cool. The next piece in there as you're, as you're registering your account, which is also cool, is it's going to encourage you to refer other people. Um, we do that because, again, back to my metaphor of it's pretty lonely on a Zoom call if you've got no friends to talk to. <laughs> so you need you need people to connect with. And the whole experience of building community and having that real time 
in studio experience and, and working on music together, you have to have other people. So we've, we've created what we hope is a great flow for, you know, creating your account that's, that's that encourages to do those things, right? So yeah, www.sessionwire.com. The YouTube page is SessionWire, all one word. So if you just search SessionWire on YouTube, you'll find it. We're also on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on all the social channels, basically. So you can find us there. And, you know, honestly, if, if you've got um, users that sign up and, and create an account and you're in your account, and if you search for me, Kevin Williams, I don't have a different display name, it's just Kevin Williams, and you go look for, search for Kevin Williams, it will allow you to add me and send me a connection request, just like Facebook. I want to be your friend. I want, <laughs> I want to connect with you. And if somebody wants to connect with me, you can also connect with me at Kevin at SessionWire.com. That's my email. And I'm glad to, if I can, if I'm not overwhelmed with people trying, reaching out to me, I'm glad to give you a call, have you give me a call and I can give you a quick, you know, walk through and say, hi, you know, I, I can do that, providing it isn't so many people I can't keep up, but I'll try. That's awesome. That's, that's yeah. such a great um, offer. So thank you. Thank you so much for that, for our listeners. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. This has been so great. I am so thankful that you guys have created such a product. I think it's really needed. I think it's really exciting and I cannot wait for our listeners and those who are watching to start using session wire. Yeah. Well, it's been, it's been my pleasure, Bree. Fun to chat with you and talk about session wire and studio stuff in general. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the profitable musician show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.